Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm gonna kick this video off discussing AMD's ray tracing performance in RDNA 2. Clearly, NVIDIA did get the lead with ray tracing implementation with its graphics cards. First of all, with Turing and now Ampere. So this has led to a couple of things. One is that developers are quite familiar with the ray tracing implementation of NVIDIA's architecture. And the second is that, well, technically speaking, NVIDIA are on their second generation of ray tracing. Whereas with AMD, well, things are obviously the reverse. However, there is still a lot of headroom in ray tracing performance for RDNA 2, as I recently discussed in a video. However, there is a bit of a follow-up to this, and it's actually prompting me to, in the future, to do a lot of testing. Currently, I'm finishing off the mesh shader video now that uh, NVIDIA have given me all of the quotes. I'm good to go. Hopefully, that video should be up tomorrow. There's no reason for it not to be, and I'm actually really excited because I think it's a really good video, although possibly I'm biased. So do get subscribed for that if you want to know a ton of information about uh, mesh shaders. Anyway, getting back to the point, he says circling, um, with the ray tracing implementation of RDNA 2, what we can see is a drastic uptick in performance if we change the way that waves are issued on the GPU and also better implementation of VGPRs or rather they are utilized more efficiently. That's a better way to say that. And this was discussed by Philip on Twitter. I'll link the original thread in the description of this video along with my video where I covered the topic. However, there is an update again, thanks to Philip, and it's actually making me really wanna do some ray tracing investigation of my own on RDNA 2. But let's have a look at his uh, thread. So anyone remember the thread that blew up way beyond what I intended, he said. The patch set mentioned doesn't do anything more with driver 21.3.1. It automatically uses Wave 32. So AMD is working on it. Now the compiler just needs to improve the VGPR utilization, which again are general purpose registers. Um, and Philip also provides us a benchmark where, well, you can see yourself, there is a small but tangible improvement in the ray tracing performance of Metro Exodus, which is utilizing the same GPU in both tests, along with a 5800X CPU from AMD. So what does all of this mean? Well, I don't believe that RDNA 2 is ever gonna catch up with Ampere for ray tracing. NVIDIA's architecture is just faster when it comes to ray tracing performance. However, and this is my personal opinion, I'll be very happy to be proven wrong if developers in, let's say, six months have a real handle on AMD's hardware. But what I do think is that we will see a gradual improvement for ray tracing on AMD's GPUs for desktop. But furthermore, I wonder what this is going to mean too because of the consoles. So both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series are essentially using AMD's implementation of hardware-based ray tracing. And while, of course, the desktop and consoles will probably use ray tracing differently, after all, with PC, you can adjust the settings how you want, it will naturally, well, trick, be a trickle-down effect. So I'm not saying that this is gonna mean developers are only going to focus on AMD optimization, but I do think it's going to be a side effect. And this is probably one of the reasons that NVIDIA are being ultra aggressive at the moment, pushing its own technology, such as, for example, DLSS, as we recently discovered uh, AMD's own uh, Fidelity FX Super Sharpening, or FSR, if you prefer, which is rather different in its approach to, AM to uh, NVIDIA's, excuse me, DLSS. I think that, um, ray tracing for AMD's next generation, which is going to be RDNA 3, which is already in engineering samples and should release, I'm hearing about midpoint of next year at the latest, there should be a tangible drastic improvement there. But it will be very curious to see how ray tracing evolves, particularly because Intel are pushing it too with uh, their XC architecture. There's a lot of cool stuff I feel with graphics at the moment. I definitely feel that we're in this tight transition phase with tech such as variable rate shading, mesh shaders, hardware-based ray tracing, a ton of other things. I mean, at the moment, sampler feedback isn't even a thing for PC GPUs. And of course that is going to be changing pretty soon. So yeah, my personal opinion is it's gonna be really cool. As I mentioned a moment ago, I am very uh, keen to do some ray tracing testing now on uh, AMD's RDNA 2 Clash GPUs. And I think it will be very interesting to see what happens with games coming out, let's say six months from now, to see how 
their relative performance stacks up against their NVIDIA counterparts, it should be extremely exciting, I think. But moving from AMD's GPUs, well, let's discuss a scavenger hunt, shall we? Let's talk about Intel XE. And no, I'm not joking on the scavenger hunt, although it might sound like I am. Intel are now doing a lot of teasing for the XE architecture. And while this is not super exhaustive information about that architecture, I do think it's at least worth noting since, well, at least in my opinion, their endeavors in the GPU market are actually quite interesting. So there is a very small teaser video concerning Intel's XE architecture, and it's actually been cracked by someone on uh, WCCF Tech. I believe their name is... I don't want to get this wrong, Duck of Death, which is a fantastic name. And if you basically uh, crack the little teaser, it basically leads you to an IP address, which then routes you to an official Intel website, which is basically promoting their GPUs. So on the 26th of March, so not too long at all now, about just under a week, Intel will be starting to um, host a scavenger hunt as they basically start promoting their XE architecture. Unfortunately, we don't know details such as the release date yet. However, judging by the specifications of DG2, which have leaked 512 execution units and either 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM, we can presume that these GPUs are going to be pretty darn performant. I don't think that they're going to outperform the RTX 3080 Ti, which, as I've leaked, is going to be released by end of next month. It's had a slight delay by a week or so. Uh, was originally intended to be released uh, mid-April, but it's now releasing, it looks like, last week of April. Um, anyway, getting back to the point... I do think, though, that the performance of this card is going to be semi-decent, and it really does come down to two things for me. Well, actually, three in this market. One is the availability, two is the pricing, and the third is the software support. Now, assuming Intel can have the availability down to Pat, get it, Pat, given... I'm sorry, that was a terrible joke. Anyway, um, yeah, assuming they can get the availability sorted out and the performance is let's say around RTX 3070, I'm hearing it might actually outperform the RTX 3070, but personally I'm going to err on the side of caution and say it's going to be around the 3070, possibly a little bit slower, and yeah, it could be a really nice product. I'm going to remain somewhat skeptical until I get my hands on one of these things, uh, but I'm hopeful. I really am. It's going to be curious to me, not just about the performance, though, about other things too, such as the heat and power consumption and all of that jazz. But assuming it's fully featured, which, again, given the leaks we've seen, it seems to be, I'm actually quite hopeful. And I think that it would really help to alleviate the, the shortages in the market. And, you know, there's a lot of discussion at the moment now that AMD are gobbling up more capacity over its um, TSMC with the 7NM capacity, obviously, um, Apple are starting to reduce their reliance on it as they're shifting to new processes. But you've got to remember that those fabs take quite a long time to change over. It's not like, you know, you just click your fingers and bam, AMD have just gobbled it up. It can take months for this to really come into, uh, make any meaningful difference is what I'm trying to say to the, the pipeline. And it's like bre breaking in new fabs as well. It could be like three, five years time that we actually start to see any improvement there. So I think that there is a lot of positivity on the improvement for uh, availability of products but i think that intel actually if it is this year it could have a really meaningful difference in the gpu market but that's if availability is this year and that they can get a decent quantities of the gpu and if their price is uh, uh, you know competitive and if their performance is competitive and if their software isn't like completely broken so there's a lot of ifs but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt um, because I have to say that I am very hopeful of the situation. But one last thing for Intel, and this is Alder Lake. I know that Rocket Lake has been about as popular as me telling you, well, you're going to have to carry this stone across the desert. And also there's going to be scorpions attacking you. And also I'm going to kick your shin every three or four steps. Oh, and also you're going to be walking not across, you know, a desert of sand. It's going to be a desert of Legos. But... Yeah, um, I have to say that Alder Lake could be fairly decent. And we actually have an exclusive from videocards.com. I'll, of course, link the article in the video description. So, 
With Intel's um, Alder Lake, there are several things that we can discern from this particular image. Well, actually, image is, to be precise. And again, full credit to videocards.com for this. They are stating that we could be seeing up to 20% uh, performance in single thread, we'll get to that in just a moment, up to two times increase in multi-thread performance, new Gracemont cores and hardware guided scheduling, I find that particularly interesting, improved SOC power, including energy aware core parking, latest IO for Gen 5 and Gen 4, connectivity such as uh, Wi-Fi and Thunderbolt 4, blah blah blah, who cares, well people care but in this instance I don't, Full memory support, both DDR4 and 5 are supported along with the LP derivatives. And finally, in the next one, you can see some platform information. And here it's two channel DDR5, which I find interesting given the uh, bit rate of DDR4 and 5. But well, yeah, we'll, we'll wait on that, of course. It's all about the performance. Uh, PCIe uh, Gen 5, which is excellent. And there's also, of course, the platform. I'm not going to read out the platform information because you can see it yourself. And yeah, um, obviously, this is on an entirely new socket as well. It's LGA 1700. And in terms of the IPC, I have a couple of things. So I've leaked multiple times. I've discussed multiple times. You know, tons of people have said it's around 20% gain for Alder Lake. And it seems to be proven here. With up to, um, <laughs> yeah... Up to is always an interesting word, you know, well, a term, I guess. Like, up to what, what workloads, what situations? Is it going to be in best-case scenarios that we're seeing 20%? And also, 20% from what? Are they referring to the, you know, um, base architecture being Skylake? Is it going to be Rocket Lake architecture? I don't know. Um, with that said, I do feel that Intel can be competitive. And while Rocket Lake has certainly become a meme, and frankly, it's hard to not meme it, I do feel that certain SKUs are at least decent. The 11400 is decently priced. It's like, I can't remember exactly, like 150 pounds, something like that for a six core part. And yes, arguably Zen 3 is better for a lot of people. However, the 5600X is considerably more expensive so it could be decent if you want a new platform. However, the only thing is 10th gen parts now are also quite cheap from Intel. What I'm trying to say is that Rocket Lake isn't awful. It's mostly the power consumption that, in my opinion, is kind of letting it down. However, with Alder Lake with a decent IPC bump, assuming we've got the clock frequencies, possibly it will be enough to be uh, competitive with Intel. My personal opinion is that AMD will probably still uh, maintain their leadership in especially multi-threaded workloads. However, I do think it should at least make Intel competitive. And I think that it's like the architecture, you know, the one to two architectures after that, that Intel really start to hit back. But hopefully so, because honestly, it's not fun to just have a one-sided race. That's my personal opinion. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, well, of course, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel, of course, and uh, click the bell icon because subscription and YouTube have a tentative relationship at best. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.